What's going Hello. on everyone? It's Ben from YGO from Zero back with another retro Yu-Gi-Oh video and this is actually going to be the last video for Chaos Format and we're closing it out with a really really good one because I'm going to feature one of the coolest decks that I think has been discovered in this format and that is 3 Mock. Now 3 Mock is a pretty involved combo deck, very very cool combo deck. Um, but, you know, there have been people really working on it to make it shine, and I haven't been one of the people really optimizing it super much, um, but I do have someone here with me who is really the heart and soul behind this version of the deck and has really been putting a lot of work into this deck. So, GMYFS, uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, talk about the deck a little bit. Oh, hey, my name is GMYMF. G-M-Y-F-S. Uh, so this is my three mock deck that I've been working on for probably two or three months. Uh, so how this deck started with uh, was uh, jars are my favorite monsters in any given format. They're just super funny. They just do really silly things. And uh, originally this deck actually had fiber jars as well, just to fit with the whole theme of jamming as many jars as I can to a deck. Um, so that was like the first basis for the deck. Um, secondly, uh, I first started playing uh, YGO from Zero's events with Yada and uh, Vampire format. And those formats were just like really normal summon heavy um uh, with invasion of chaos i feel like we've seen so many special summons that i just wanted to kind of abuse it to some extent and uh, that's kind of how this deck came about uh, just jars and special summoning yeah and uh this is definitely the deck to abuse special summoning so do you want to talk about like what the main sort of goal of this deck is beyond just like special summoning because there are some high impact special summons here so what are you doing with those high impact special summons so normally um, we just spam Demock and Demock kind of just like fishes through our graveyard for whatever we need. Uh, sometimes we need, you know, board wiping with Regeki. Uh, sometimes we need hand disruption. Sometimes we just need to reset our jars. Um, yeah, it's just a really versatile card in our deck. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so something super. Oh, good. No, you go ahead. Yeah, uh, something you want to do with Demok is just, like, get a few of them in the graveyard, uh, get back Monster Reborn, bring it back, and uh, just, you know, bring back the next one. So pretty much you effectively end the board with, like, two or three Demoks plus one final spell of your choice. And that's normally enough to just, you know, warp the game or end it on the spot. So would you call this deck an OTK deck? Um, yeah, it, it OTKs a lot. And quite frequently, when it has like the multiple demox, but uh, at a worst case, um, it can still like be like a grindy mid range deck if it has to. Yeah, and I mean that's the utility of demox getting back you know whatever spell you want from grave, and there are so many powerful spells in this format. So how about we go through the card by card and just talk about each card individually, why you included it, and uh, uh, just talk about the deck as a whole with that. So I'll just start at the beginning uh, with the two chaos monsters here. I think uh, that's the heart and soul of the deck to some extent. Uh, other than the Demox, those are like your other big monsters that you can just close up the game with out of nowhere. Um, what's nice about them is they require much less setup. So that's kind of why they exist. Sometimes you just go, oops, Chaos Emperor Dragon and just win. I, I know uh, most people are familiar with that in this format. Oh, uh, yeah. Because of our jars, yeah, our jars just fill both players' hands up. So it will just do really massive um, amounts of damage. Um, you know, with Fiber Jar, well, not Fiber Jar, uh, Morphing Jar and Cyber Jar, just adding five plus cards to the field in hand. Um, so that's also something that's nice with Chaos Emperor Dragon. Yeah, almost, in our deck at least. It almost reminds me of like Empty Jar and where they're trying to use like the jars to build up a big hand to then go for card destruction. But this deck's just Correct. saying, you know, why use card destruction when we could just Chaos Emperor Dragon and burn to death? Um, this is super funny. Like three months ago, like before this version of the deck existed, I was messing with Secret Barrels too. It's just really funny. Like, you just like randomly barrel your opponent down and just like Chaos Emperor Dragon. It's just really bizarre. Yeah. Chaos Burn is a potential option for this format. Um, yeah. Uh, so do you want to just continue with the light monster? Yeah, let's go. So what's really funny was there was like six. There was two Magician of Faiths. But I feel like at some points of the game, they weren't doing too much. And I feel like uh, once our deck starts churning itself, churning through itself, um, you know, one Thunder Dragon will just like pretty much enable our entire deck. Yeah, our, our deck just goes through itself uh, at really rapid paces. So I think, uh, you know, just finding one will, will do the job. Yeah, and you also got card destruction here to pair with Thunder Dragons. You got Graceful Charity. Correct. There are ways to abuse Thunder Dragon here. Yeah, we also have the reloads too, uh, mm -hmm. which is really nice. Yeah. Yeah, even if you reload back to Thunder Dragons and draw another one, I mean, that one can then be a bit more deck thinning uh, as well. 
So it's not even Correct. that bad. Mm-hmm. Where should we go next? Let's talk about the other darks, I think. Um, because, sure. you know, besides like the Demox and the CD here and the Cyberdrive, I guess, um, you know, a, there's Sangan, which of course searches out pretty much everything you'd want in the deck, but also there's Triple Gravekeeper's Spy. And Gravekeeper's Spy is a card that's been seeing play in a lot of other decks, but you might think in a more combo heavy deck like this, Spy might not be as good. So uh, talk about this card and um, why it's in the deck. Oh, so this card is really important to our deck. Um, I feel like I added it after the tournament, and I wish I had it in my deck during the tournament. Um, our deck is susceptible to just random chip damage, and this kind of like stems the bleeding. Uh, secondly, it's really important because it lets us tribute summon Demok. I mean, it seems kind of obvious, but um, my my older list was a little bit greedier, so I didn't think about it. Um, there's also some really cool lines with Spy that I've had where uh, I've had a spy flip, I've tributed it for a Thunder Dragon, and there's another Thunder Dragon in Graveyard. So I banish the spy that I tributed, the Thunder Dragon that's in the Graveyard, and I summon like a Chaos Ember Dragon. So you end up with a board of Chaos Ember Dragon, Thunder Dragon, and then you can just Dimension Fusion and just randomly bop people. That's happened more, more times than I can count. Yeah, and Dimension Fusion, another very interesting card that this deck can really abuse. And... One other thing about Spy that I noticed in the games that I played with the deck is that um, sometimes when you go for Dimension Fusion, ideally you'd want to win the game off that, right? Because you're getting back Demox. Likely, Absolutely. And uh, you're probably going for game. But sometimes you just have to activate it even when you can't go for game. And if you've got a Spy in the Banish Zone, you can bring this back in defense and serve as like a wall if they do clear something, like your Demox, for instance. That doesn't yeah, they also provide their own chip damage. Yeah, they, yeah. you can also chip damage with Demox, or uh, Spy, and then the Demox will just come crashing in, and, you know, sometimes yeah. that, that'll just be sufficient. And, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it may seem like little things here, but life points really do matter a lot in this format. And, uh, you know, especially when CD is dealing 300 per card, like, um, the difference between, like, 200 or 300 damage to your opponent can be pretty massive. It can be... The difference between winning a game and not winning that turn. So, um, very important card in the Spy. Shall we move on to all the spells? Because this deck is full of spells. Yeah, so this deck plays a bunch of weird spells. It's also not playing staples that people are accustomed to, like uh, Mirage of Nightmare, um, you know, stuff like that. Uh, so, Book of Moon, yep, that's, uh, that's a really versatile card in our deck. It lets us uh, reflip our jars after we play Book of Tayu. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Book of Taiyu, that flips our, our monsters face up. And after you Book of Taiyu, your Morphing Jar, you can just reset it down with Book of Moon and just pray to draw another Book of Taiyu. By that time, you just turn through like 10 cards. It's pretty silly. Um, Book of Moon also fills another role in our deck um, by letting us you know, prevent damage. You know, uh, As I mentioned before, our deck's defenses aren't super high, so we have the Spies and the Book of Moons to preserve our life total. Uh, also, um, uh, Moon can kind of let's manipulate when our opponent hits our Morphing Jar when it's set, right? Because mm. if you let the Jar flip over on the opponent's turn, there's just so much they can do with five cards. So, I think, uh, Moon just also does a really good job of just, um, electing when we, um, resolve our Morphing Jar. Yeah, it's almost like the deck is playing four traps instead of just one with the IO, because Moon often turns into a trap if you're not pulling off the big combos. When you're using the jars and just turning through your deck, card destruction, uh, another very important card to have there. Yeah, I think that's one of our most important like cards to unbrick our hands because it just throws Thunder Dragons and Dark Magician Chaos uh, into the graveyard. You know, that's where it's better than reload, obviously. Um, yeah, card destruction is just really important to this deck. And the reloads are interesting too because like reload is always, I think, a very interesting card in a lot of decks because it is a minus one, just like card destruction, but it's also not doing graveyard setup. So a lot of decks sort of choose not to play it. So what are your thoughts on Reload in this deck in particular? So this deck has a lot of, like, quote-unquote bricks, and I, you know, people will notice that between the Demox and the Thunder Dragons, depending on what stage of the game you draw them. Um, I think Reload kind of acts as a, you know, a way just to mitigate some of that from happening. And uh, although it's a, a minus one, there's so many card combinations on our deck, like Jar plus Book, we'll, they'll just undo um, what the reloads, you know, quote-unquote cost is. And I think from playing the deck myself as well, uh, this card's super strong, and uh, it's, it's almost unassumingly so. So very, very cool card. Yeah, there's just a lot of powerful cards you can get off the reload, like, you know, the Pot of Grieve and Mitigate it, uh, Graceful Charities, it's just really powerful. 
there's just so many cards that um, you can get where sometimes it's just kind of worth the minus one, even if you don't have like value or just for the sake of unbreaking yourself. It's just worth uh, putting into consideration. Now you also have confiscation and forceful sentry here, two hand rips. Uh, so what are your thoughts on these cards? Uh, I think it's really important to have disruption because sometimes it lets us you know, force through our plays, um, you know. Also, uh, there are some ridiculous games where you just open with Morphing Jar, tie you, and like one of those two cards, the Confiscation or the Sentry. If you're able to just like set those, like the Sentry or the Confiscation, and just like flip over your Morphing Jar, uh, not only do you get to get a fresh hand, but you also get to rip down their new hand as well. And I think that's quite silly. A lot of those games are just like free wins. Yeah. Because you're just ahead on cards so much. And then you have information on their new hand. And also, you know, a lot of people, you know, they really like Forceful Sentry, Confi, Duo, etc. Because they're really good early in the game. But later on in the game, it's like, ah, these cards are bricks. So it's always unfortunate when you draw them late. But if you're using things like Jar, for instance, or Cyber Jar, um, then they sort of become less bricky later in the game, which is really cool as well. Yeah, I think late game, if you can just snipe a Chaos Emperor Dragon or BLS, like, it's just all downhill from there. Um, there's, like, no real threats in, like, the standard Chaos stacks. So I feel they'll just, like, outright end the game other than those two. So, you know, late game, if you just resolve a Confi or a Sentry on their big guy, it's pretty pretty safe. I think uh, Dark Hole and Raigeki probably don't need much introduction here. As you mentioned earlier, you can get them back off Demok, which is very good. But any, anything special about them in this deck? Oh, Dark, Dark Hole is like probably the best card out of those two. Uh, Dark Hole is just quite silly. If you can just establish um, a board of Demox, Dark Hole them, and just Dimension Fusion, you can just, just get an insane amount of spells back to your hand. And it's pretty much lights out. I think the interaction between the Demox banishing themselves and then Dimension Fusion is just comical. And, you know, Dimension Fusion on one copy here. I've seen some other decks trying to pull off the three mock strategy where they play multiple dimension fusions. So what are your thoughts on just playing one or potentially playing multiples? I think one is okay. I've played with two and that adds more bricks to this deck. Um, I think we've also uh, been able to win a lot of games about dimension fusion between, you know, Monster Born Chains with Demox, uh, Singular Chaos Monsters. Uh, I think dimension fusion is fine where it is. And uh, I think the life point cost is what kind of deters me from playing more copies. Because 2,000 is a huge chunk for this deck. Yeah. And, uh, and and like I said before, uh, we go through our deck so fast. If we need it, we'll probably see it. Yeah, and I sort of have that similar idea. Like, um, playing the deck for myself, which you'll see in a, a second um, as I go through the analysis of the games. Uh, you know, I never really missed having another copy of this. I think that one copy is definitely right here and i think you're definitely correct on that um, it's like a nice to have card you know it's like cool yeah. i also noticed a true nade in addition to triple mst here so in terms of spell and trap removal did you feel like that was enough or do you want more true nades maybe in the future uh you know more like harpies or something uh, what are your thoughts on this speaking of harpies that used to be harpies feather duster um giant true nade is pretty pretty great um it works with a lot of our cards uh sometimes we need to set your hand to your morphing jar if they're quick plays you can't play them in the same turn so Giant Trunade will give you access to those cards again. Um, also, Giant Trunade plus Premature Burial is like a ghetto monster reborn to some extent. So that's where that kind of comes into play. Um, there's this one game where I was able to just bring back a few Demox with the uh, Trunade and Premature Burial. Yeah. So that's kind of where that comes into play. And then, uh, you know, it's also funny when you bounce your opponent's back row and you just flip the Morphing Jar anyways. It's like, cool. It's a, it's a Harpy's Feather Duster at home. Yeah, with more utility in addition, so... Yeah, I think more uh, true yeah. is really cool. Um, and for the MSTs, like I noticed three MSTs here. Uh, I think those are important. Yeah, um, they just deal with opposing IOs. This deck's really spell heavy, as you can see. Uh, you know, IO shuts down a lot of decks, but for this deck, they hit by IO. That's kind of sucky. And did you ever feel like you needed more spell and trap removal, maybe less spell and trap removal, uh, or do you think that this is just right? Uh, you know, it felt pretty fine from uh, my my testing. Uh, I'm not opposed to trying a second Trunade. But uh, this seems all right. Yeah. Space is really tight in this deck, which is like the hardest thing about like uh, making changes to this deck. Um, there's so many moving parts and pieces where uh, making small adjustments could throw off the deck's balance, I guess. Yeah. And it, it's something that like, I'm sure some people out there are wondering like, why is there no delinquent duo in addition to Compi and Forceful? Um, but you know, deck space is really tight. Yeah. Also the knowledge that those two provide is just way too insane duo is definitely yeah. the worst of the hand rips in this format for sure yeah i've cited it a few times and you know even i've removed it from my sideboard yeah and we'll get to the sideboard soon because there are some very interesting things there but to just finish out the main deck a bit 
Uh, there's a painful oh, here pain. as well. Oh, that's probably like one of the most important cards in the deck. Um, it lets us set up uh, our graveyard um, in a multitude of angles. Uh, it lets us dump multiple demox. It lets us dump spells we might need to get back to the demox, etc. Um, I think it's just one of the most important cards. In the it, format period, not even just deck. Yeah, I mean, this card is crazy in most decks, but in this deck especially, I think it's both, you know, better on average than your typical Chaos deck using this, and also a bit more difficult to use in a lot of cases. Um, because sometimes your fives are not as straightforward as you might think. Yeah, and sometimes you just use it as random deck thinning, which is hilarious, and uh, that actually just works out for you, even if you do the um, in the later stages of the game, right? Now... The last spell we haven't talked about here is just Pot of Greed. Uh, actually, I don't think we can. What does about it do? As well, what does yeah. it do? What does it do? That's the question. Um, we may never find out, but <laughs> I think the Pot and Graceful are pretty straightforward here, um, as well as Io. Uh, unless you have any other thoughts on the main deck, uh, I'm good to move to the side if you are. Yeah, the one trap, I think it's like the most important trap to play. Um, it also, you know, gives us counterplay to our opponents. Um, I think Io going first is pretty silly as well. You know, most people would agree. But, uh, you know, kind of just forces to our place very easily. They can't rip our, our hand, and they just can't blast our field with, like, you know, sweepers. Yeah. Yeah, super strong card, and a lot of people's most hated card in this format. Yeah, I think people hate that card in, like, almost any format it's legal in. Absolutely brutal if you set it up, but still very, very good, and uh, you have to play it here. So, speaking of uh, traps, I'm not sure if you want to start with the traps in the side deck. Oh, this side deck's kind of hilarious, though. I feel like the deck's main deck is so tight, um, as mentioned before. Where, uh, you know, side decks kind of like a vibe. A lot of the time when you're working with a deck that's still like very experimental, not many people have played yeah. it, uh, you're still trying to sort of tinker with the main deck as well. Oftentimes the side deck is just very loose and just like, you know, uh, do I want to bring in TT? Like, am I feeling like I need protection against their stuff more? Um, or do I want to bring in like Magician of Faith? Because maybe they're, um, you know, maybe this card will be better here okay so yeah let's start with some traps uh i think out of the sideboard those are the most real cards on our side deck uh world decree is really good when going first um you know we get to stop opposing imperial orders we get to stop torrential tributes that they might use to disrupt us uh, i think decree is kind of underrated and i think it's usable in just more decks other than this one um i, I just really love the card yeah i think it honestly is a staple side deck card in my opinion um although i have seen people not playing in the side it just really stopped a variety of just very annoying decks to deal with yeah when you stop an io with world decree man they just the look <laughs> on their face i would assume it's just priceless yeah um i think it's the biggest downside it is very susceptible to mst and you know that's run at three breaker also pops it but you know by the time you stick a decree um uh, and breaker comes out it might be a little too late yeah. But uh, you are susceptible to MST. That's just a fair warning uh, to anybody who plans to use Decree in any deck. But even if, you know, you lose the MST, if you manage to use this yeah. to negate even one trap, you yeah. have to draw the it's MST. It's worthwhile. Yeah, and our deck plays a very uh, low trap count, so it's there's, like, no dead draws for us uh, yeah. after we resolve a Decree. Yeah. Speaking of more traps, Spell Shield Type 8 is a very, very cool counter trap that not many decks are playing. So do you want to talk about this? Because I actually really like it in this deck in particular. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Spell Shield Type 8 is a really cool counter trap card. Uh, the cost is a little bit more prohibitive than uh, Magic Jammer, per se, but um, we play a lot of spells. But secondly, it provides a lot of utility um, for our deck. Um, you'll notice that Nobler Crossout is uh, commonly cited, and that's really good against Jars and Gravekeeper Spy, even Sangin Witch in some cases. So, in some cases, Spell Shield Type 8 can be a uh, free negation for that. Yeah. Uh, oddly enough, I think it can also stop like snatch steal and change your heart rate. Yeah, and uh, you know yeah. you don't want to have like a demock on field and they snatch it and then it's like, oh darn, you know now I got to deal with my own demock. Yeah, and there's some cases where you might use its ability to discard a spell to stop a pivotal confiscation or entry. I don't know. Yeah, it can it can stop a wide array of spells. Obviously, uh, it just it just offers more roles, um, you know, protection in multiple avenues. And unlike, you know, Magic Jammer, it's not just, you know, having to discard all the time for it. Although Magic Jammer, honestly, you know, with yeah, Thunder Dragons and Demox, uh, might also be a consideration. Yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, might experiment with that myself. Uh, yeah. Discard outlet's nice. Just yeah. being able to ditch monsters uh, when we need to. So that might be worth, like, I don't know, testing a 1-1 one -one split, which sounds kind of silly. But I think they both have a nice role. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm not opposed to paying one of each. 
And I think, you know, this is again, like this deck is being optimized. So these are sort of questions to ask and experiment with. So, um, you know, hopefully if you're watching yeah. this and are interested in this deck, you actually try and pick it up and experiment with it yourself because uh, I'd be really cool just to see more people working with this, seeing what techs you might consider um, and just seeing how that goes. Of course, the last trap in the side deck is TT. So what are your thoughts on this card? Uh, I like bringing that in when I go like... Uh second sometimes our opponents overcommit and you just go oops and just blast our monsters uh, it's, it's a quick way to stem the bleeding yeah so you know they, they set up their board and you set tt and then poof, set them back a few turns yeah seems uh seems all right yeah also that's, that's pretty much why that's there yeah can potentially set up your uh demox in the banish zone for dimension fusion potentially as well so. yeah uh at one point i was testing mirror force and tt but i kind of like tt because it deals with breaker very easily uh breaker is just a yeah. nuisance I noticed um, there's no Call of the Haunted uh, in the side or main. Uh, and you'd think Call of the Haunted could bring back like Dark Mission of Chaos, for instance, and be pretty good. So did you test that card? And what are your thoughts on it? Um, uh, I've tested it. It's a little awkward sometimes. Uh, I think missing the timing is a possibility. Yeah. Uh, with the box. So it. that's exactly. So it's, it's a little rough. It's also a little slow. It's not terrible, but, you know, sometimes yeah. it adds a, a few more bricks to the deck because, you know, cars set up like most of our cards on our deck so i didn't feel like it was kind of worth adding um another brick for that reason yeah no i agree um and honestly in a lot of decks i'm like not the biggest fan of call because oftentimes you don't have monsters in grave to bring back with it haiku or maybe you banish for your own chaos monsters um but it can be a bit awkward yeah but moving on to the other card in this side deck do you want to talk about the monsters or the spells first okay so uh between the monsters and spells i think the only real real cards in that are probably the fiber jar and possibly the poisons so the fiber jar is really good also if you go second um you know if your opponent's just hammering you with stuff it's a nice reset button that's why i like the jars in general um sometimes it's just like a bailout button so it's yeah. nice to have the uh, the fourth member of the team there it's on the bench yeah also potentially sets up your demox in the banish zone yeah. it will send demox to the banish zone when it shuffles back there's that as well and it that gets you Basically, one more demock not in deck to act as a brick. So uh, that's kind of interesting as well. Um, and we've also got, you know, you mentioned that the poisons might be slightly real. So what deck would you bring this in against? Oh, no, the, the, the anti-scientist uh, FTK. Uh, this deck, you know, it, we I've played so many games against that deck, it's hilarious. Uh, yeah. Yeah, me, me and Claude have had uh, some late nights just playing. Because we're, we're silly people. The classic FTK player, Clody the Legend. Clody. It's interesting because, like, Scientist is a deck that, like, is uh, maybe overrepresented in our community. But uh, it's yeah. not clear how good it is. So, um, I mean, it can't hurt to have these, though. Too. Even against, like, random burn, yeah, random burn bags, it's not really a minus one for, if we can just reset our hand so often, I feel. So. Yeah. It could also fuel a dimension fusion as well if you have two of these. No, that's correct. And in those matchups like burn, it's like the difference between winning and losing in, you know, multiple ways. It will just possibly enable us to win or just buy a turn or something. I don't think it's the worst thing on the planet, but uh, we're not dealing 800 to somebody. I can tell you that much. <laughs> yeah. Not in most cases, at least. Yeah. We're not, uh, we're not playing Ukazi. Yeah. Lastly, we've got uh, the true nade here, which we kind of talked about earlier with uh, including another true nade in the deck potentially. Um, but we got exchange and triple shallow grave. So I feel like these are what you were talking about when uh, it was a bit less serious for these. Uh, exchange is good versus a combo deck. So you just take away their pivotal pieces. And uh, we also have like bricks to get them right here. Here's a democ or here's a thunder dragon. Mm. But uh, there are some scenarios where like late game exchange will just like nab their dumb chaos monster from their hand and just like you just like, slap them with it. It's like cool. Thanks for the win condition. <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of a meme. It's like, I would not play that seriously, but I mean, against other combo decks, it has its utility there. Shallow Grave is a very interesting card, especially when you're playing the Jars. So, um, what are your thoughts on this? Oh, this is a giga meme. Like, if you think this deck's a meme, this just pushes the meme even further. Uh, if you just want to just, like, make your opponent feel, like, bad, you just bring in Shallow Grave, just go for a mill strategy. It's it's just super funny. Uh, sometimes I'll just side deck out some Demox in like, Dimension Fusion, and I just, like, start milling people. It's come up a few games. Yeah. It, it's really, like yeah. Just empty jar at that point. <laughs> yeah, effectively. You have all the tools. You keep like one or two demogs to, you know, reset your jars and get back free spells. But uh, yeah, there, there's, been a, there's been a handful of games where I've milled people just using this Shallow Grave plan. Yeah. I yeah. strongly would not recommend doing it, but if you just want to have fun, 
uh, by all means, go for it. Yeah, and you know, there's always discussion about smokescreen sides, and uh, this is definitely a smokescreen that your opponent will probably not expect. Um, that being said, if they bring in things like knock, etc., to deal with uh, your jars, um, then going harder into that sort of strategy might be a bit of an issue, but Shallow Grave is still kind of interesting. The unfortunate thing about this card, uh, for people out there wondering whether maybe it could combo with Demok, it unfortunately cannot because Demok doesn't get back a spell and flip summon. And uh, the special summon for Shallow Grave will have it face down, so it won't actually trigger the spell activation, uh, or trigger the spell add, that is. Yeah, I appreciate you pointing that out. Uh, that's, that's kind of important. Yeah, that's also spent- why we kind of just take out some number of Demoks. I've been messing with other sideboards for fun, and like... Uh... We've we've messed with like just putting reasonings and other dumb things like sacred cranes called haunted, Jinzo on the side deck just to like just throw them off right. They think they can just like bring in like fair pieces of cards just to hate on our, our deck, but uh you know I think I think a possible smoke screen to some extent will just invalidate some of their cards, which is pretty funny. Yeah, and uh, that's one of the cool things about this deck still being sort of in an unformed state, like an unfinished state, where. I feel like, you know, one other direction you can take with this is going for the reasoning combos. So, like, adding Sacred Cranes, uh, adding things like Jinzo, um, where, you know, they're going to probably call eight every time. Oh, you can just take out, like, one or two D-Box, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can also just take out one or two D-Box when you have reasoning. It's it's super funny. You can just, like, mess with them. Like, they're calling the wrong numbers, they're, they're citing the wrong cards. I, I think I think there's a, you know, a worthwhile, you know, thing to look at there. Yeah. So that's another avenue for people wanting to experiment with this deck. And I encourage people to experiment with this deck because I think it's one of the coolest things to come out of our sort of retroactive exploration of this format. And while I think that the current incarnation of it is probably like tier two or maybe upper rogue, um, I think that this deck could definitely have potential to rise in the future. So I think it's really cool to see. Now, speaking of future, you know, experimentation with this deck, are there any sort of last things that you want to mention? Maybe different directions you can go with it. Uh, cards you're considering adding or replacing um, for the future? Yeah, this is this is going to be uh, sweet and short, but uh, I'm I'm considering testing a third reload. Um, you know, I'm not sure if you have any feedback uh, in your games that you can offer us right now, but uh, I was I was going to consider testing a third reload, possibly over one spy. Um, how do, you, how do you feel about Reload as a card? I liked Reload, honestly, in the games that I played. There were actually some games that y'all will see later where I reloaded multiple times and actually drew into what I needed uh, for that game. So I think it's, it's a good card, especially when you you are playing some bricks. And I think it could potentially be more high value than something like um, maybe even a Confiscation. I think that might also be a, a worthwhile uh, replacement for, you know, slotting in the third Reload. Um... There have been games in this current stack, uh, you know, version where reloads have shuffled and, you know, clunky spies on my hand. You know, you draw too many spies and you have one in play. It's like, it's really awkward, but reload can just bail you out sometimes. and just like, just give you a better card. Also, fun application of reload. Not necessarily the best application of reload, but it can come up occasionally. Uh, if you're going for a spell and your opponent flips up IO and you don't have MST and your hand's like all spells, you can chain reload to the IO. Um... Not necessarily going to give you a way to get out of the situation, but it could potentially draw you into monsters as opposed to spells. Yeah, that's that's a very great and uh, valid point. That's happened like two times at least for me. Yeah. And uh, I think that's a really great point that you brought up. Uh, sometimes people just overlook that. It is a quick play, and I think it's really great that you uh, shared that. I highly encourage everyone out there interested in this to check out the deck. Yeah, it's pretty much like only change I kind of mess with in the main deck. Like, uh, the side deck's still experimental. The format's still, I think, being explored to some extent, and this deck's trying to explore itself. Yeah. So, you know, bringing generic uh, disruption and anti-disruptions. That's all I can say uh, about the side deck, at least. Thank you so much for, you know, coming on and sort of explaining your thoughts behind this. I think this deck is really, really cool, and I really enjoyed the games that I played with it. So um, I encourage people out there to try it out for um, themselves and see what they do with the deck. Um but now we've gone through the deck like this, uh, let's show off some games with it. Okay, so going through these replays, uh, it'll basically be my experience learning how to play the deck, as the deck is very difficult to pilot. So let's just dive into the games. Uh, I'm facing PJ Darkness first, free from guests on the channel. Always a pleasure to have them on. And uh, let's see how I do in my first game with the deck. So this is an okay hand. We got Reload, we got CED. Confi as well uh, to hit out of their hand, so that's pretty decent. Uh, they're going to fire Duo, though, which is a bit rough. They're going to hit Demok, and here we've got a bit of a choice. Uh, Demok is 
probably the best card for them to hit here. Uh, unless they have, like, Monster Reborn to get back a spell, that would be really bad for us. Um, but it doesn't really do much in our hand, so I think it's fine to just pitch here. But beyond that, it's a bit tricky. I mean, we're low on cards, so we could pitch a Reload, potentially, as that's a bit unfortunate to just Reload for two. But honestly, honestly, I think I'm going to pitch the Confi, because Confi costs you a 1,000. Also, our opponent's going to sort of go through their turn, commit things to field. Uh, so Confi's going to be a bit less good than it would have been for us if we had just played it, you know, going first. Uh, but as is, we unfortunately, you know, lost the die roll, so we are going second here. So we're just going to pitch the Confi, and I think that's fine. Uh, our opponent's going to go for a graceful as well. I mean, that's that's kind of rough. They pitch change of heart scientist, which is a worrying sign for us. If they're pitching change of heart, that means the other cards in their hand must be pretty good. They're going to painful choice here. Send Magician of Faith, Imperial Order, Mirage of Nightmare, Confi, and Forceful. Now, we don't want to give them Confi and Forceful because our hand is already low enough and they're already up on cards. So the choice here really is between Mirage, Io, and Magician of Faith. I don't really think we want to give them Magician of Faith, as we don't really have a way to deal with that. I was a bit annoying because we don't have a way to deal with that, though, either. Um, so we might give them Mirage. No, we do give them Magician of Faith. I guess we're just saying, like, we got to have a way to clear this, uh, or else we just lose either way. So, you know, uh, might as well just do it. Uh, and also, I guess we can sort of play around the Hand Rips, at least. We can't play around the Graceful, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess if we get a Light and Grave, uh, we can see the and then pop the Magician of Faith and go for that. So I guess there's that line as well, but as it's looking kind of rough for us. We draw card destruction, so we could go for that, but instead we're just going to go for a reload for two. I choose to set the card destruction because we got enough bricks in the deck that, like, I do think that being able to discard them off of these reload draws could be good. But maybe I should have shuffled this back as well. We draw Regeki, that is really good. We can just fire that. And we hit a DD Warrior Lady. Oof. We had the read that it was Magician of Faith. Unfortunately, it's just DD Warrior Lady, which, you know, it's not bad to lose that, but it's not really the best either. Um, we choose just to pass. We could have gone for card destruction here, pitching their Magician of Faith, but I figured I'd save that for after they flipped up Magician of Faith. Um, but they're just going to go for MST in the end phase, pop our card destruction, so we get a bit punished for that. Um... They're going to banish a light and a dark, go for BLS here as well. So we really should have fired that card destruction, I guess. Although looking at it in sort of this way is like not the best way to evaluate your plays when looking at a replay. You want to sort of look at each situation and think, okay, what's the best thing I can do here? I do think the best thing that we could have done there is actually just fired the card destruction in main phase two uh, to hit the Magician of Faith out. So we also would have hit BLS, so we would have gotten even more rewarded for doing that play. Um, but not going for the card destruction there was definitely wrong. We draw a Book of Tai, which is not useful for us. We set the MST. They've got another MST. Just snipe our MST. And they're going to go for another 3k. So we're down to 2,000. We're looking pretty rough for us here. Uh, we draw Thunder Dragon. That's not going to do it. And yeah, that's going to be the end of game one. Uh, I think maybe if we'd gone for the card destruction, things would have turned out a little bit differently. But honestly, we were so far behind there, and we've got enough brick cards in our deck. For instance, you saw Taiyu, you saw Thunder Dragon coming up. Uh, that wouldn't have been really that helpful. So um, I think that we wouldn't have necessarily been in a winning position there, even if we'd gone for card destruction, but it would have been the correct play to do there either way. We draw Graceful card I mean, this sand is insane. This sand's really good. We're going to go for Graceful right away, draw three, and we draw two Dark Magician Chaos. We're going to pitch both. We've got the IO in case they've got, like, Monster Reborn here. They need Reborn plus MST to actually, um, you know, bring back our Demox. So I figured that this is fine. Uh, I set the saying again, set IO, set card destruction, pass back, or uh, also set Regeki, pass back to them. This is telegraphing IO a little bit, but we also kind of want to telegraph Morphing Jar to get them to, like, use Regeki or Dark Hole on it. They're going to go for Painful. We've got IO. Oh, they've got MST. Oof, that's rough. I mean, the good thing is the fact that they're going for Painful now maybe means that they don't have Reborn in hand, so we can keep them off that. Uh, they're going to send a Bunch plus a Magician of Faith. Um, uh, we could give them, like, Forceful or Confi, because we do have Morphing Jar, so if they send back, like, BLS, which, you know, BLS is the more threatening card, uh, then we could just, like, Morphing Jar to draw back what we, you know, didn't... Uh, what we lost, basically. But we give them the Magician of Faith. Uh, I figured, you know, we've got Raigeki set, so we can deal with Magician of Faith. Um, 
But yeah, they've got Monster Reborn, so that's really bad for us. Uh, they can Reborn the Democ, get back Reborn, bring back our other Democ, and that is really, really rough. Um, I do think that, like, this was still the correct play to, to do, because we did have IO set, so they need, like, exactly Reborn uh, MST. Um, reborn to one of, so, like, I, I think this was the correct play to do, but, like, it just ended up biting us in the butt. And uh, that's unfortunate. It happens sometimes. They're going to go for change of heart as well on our set. It's a Sangan. So at least our Sangan is, like, not being banished. So we can get a search off it later, potentially. But yeah, this is really unfortunate for us. Um, yeah, quite unfortunate. They're going to set three Fire Mirage. Pass back to us. Um, we draw a Book of Moon. We don't have a way to deal with that Mirage. They're going to get to draw four here. Luckily, we do have this Raigeki, so we'll be able to clear all those. Um, but, you know... Now we can't use Dimension Fusion, so these Demox are basically essentially gone for us for the rest of the game. Uh, unless our opponent plays like Upstart or something. But we're just going to attack in with Sangan there for a thousand. Uh, main two, we're going to set the Morphing Jar as we're really behind on cards. Uh, there is an argument to keep it in hand to not give our opponent more cards, but our opponent is the one who's going to be way up on cards here. So I figure setting the Morphing Jar is the correct play. Uh, we could have also potentially card destruction to try and draw something better. Uh, to actually, you know, keep us alive here, but I think this is fine. Uh, they go for MST on the Mirage, popping that, drawing a card there, and now they are going to think about this, and they're going to summon out a Sangan. They're going to go for TT here, popping the entire board. We get a search, they get a search, uh, but unfortunately our Morphing Jar is now offline. We search out a Cyber Jar to sort of protect ourselves a little bit. They search out a Fiber Jar, and they're going to banish a Light and a Dark, go for BLS, and that will be the uh, uh, we got booked, so we can survive eternally. So we booked the BLS, you know, just in case. Um, but they're going to set one pass back to us. And we draw CD, so we've got a light and a dark there. Uh, if we didn't draw CD here, we actually could have had light and darks in grave, uh, with the BLS cyber door. But as is, we've just got a dark right now. So not the best for us. Um, I think we do just have to card destruction here because, you know, if we set cyber jar, they can flip up BLS, banish the cyber jar, and... And then we're in a really tough spot, so uh, we just are going to go for card destruction here. And uh, we draw three. Oh, double Thunder Dragon, too. Oh, this is... Yeah, that's, that's bleak. Um, yeah, nothing much we can do there. Um, I mean, this is why, like, it, in most decks, I, I'm not the biggest fan of Thunder Dragon, because it can be a major brick in this format. But in this in this deck, you kind of have to play it. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of rough, but uh, it is what it is. And we're just going to set one as a bluff, see what they do. But uh, yeah, this is, I mean, they've got lethal, so that's just going to be the end of the game. So kind of brutal games there. Um, not the best showing uh, for us, but we're still learning how the deck works, how it ticks. Uh, there are definitely some misplays that we made here. Whether those misplays, you know, if we had played them correctly, would have actually, you know, allowed us to win this game. That's another question. Um, but, you know, this wasn't, uh, I think this was more a skill issue on my part for these games. Uh, so let's just dive in to some more games with the deck and see if I can actually get better at it and pull off a major combo with it. Okay, we got our next game against PJ Darkness here. We lose Rock, Paper, Scissors again. Oh, it's just not our day for that sort of thing. Um, but this is, uh, ooh, this hand is, I mean, there are some things that can turn this hand online. So it's not the worst hand in the world. Um, it's just kind of iffy. They're going to set three, set which, pass back to us. We don't know it's which, but, uh. You know, it, it's a set monster. We go for Confi here just to see what they're working with. And we get to see that they've got a Breaker and a Snatch Shield. We got MST for the Snatch Shield. And we don't have any monsters anyways, so uh, we're going to send the Breaker there. Um, we send that. Uh, we're just going to set MST, set Book. Uh, Book didn't really have a target right now, but we don't want them to, like, just MST our MST in the end phase. So uh, we want to save the MST for the Snatch Shield. I mean, we could have kept the Snatch Shield in hand, or the MST in hand, but... Uh, I think it's good to just commit things as bluffs. Uh, we need to do something here to basically threaten that we have something to stop a big aggressive push on their part. They're just going to flow a witch attack in. And we draw a Gravekeeper Spy. That's really good. We're going to set that. Pass back to them. And they're going to think about this. And they're going to go for Dark Hole here. That probably is the correct play. Uh, given that they can have the read that we're pretty monster light. And, you know, this way they get out another monster and go for this. They're going to attack in with Kaiku. Now, we could potentially book it to protect the Spy in Grave. But honestly... Uh, we can Dimension Fusion back the Spy, so it's not really the worst thing in the world to take this damage and lose the Spy there. We draw Graceful Charity, which is pretty good. We're going to go for Graceful. Uh, they're going to let that go through. We draw... Ooh, those are not bad ones. 
A uh, bit of a tricky situation here. We're going to pitch Demok, pitch Book. Uh, we don't really have a good way to get Demok on field right now. I mean, we could set Sangan, uh, hope that they banish it with the Kaiku, and then Dimension Fusion back our two monsters, then, you know, summon out Demok the hard way. But uh, I figure it's just better just to do this. Um, we're just going to get the Demok and Grave. I mean, if they've got Reborn here, then that's really rough for us. We don't really have a way to deal with that. Uh, but we got Raigeki at least to clear their board next turn. And we got Book to prevent the Demok from hitting over the uh, Sangen. So it's not the worst thing in the world. We're going to bring out a Sangen, go for Raigeki here. And we get a search here. We're going to search out a Witch of the Black Forest. And that's a pretty good Sangen search. They're going to attack in for 28, uh, dropping this down to 23. Uh, or they're going to attack in for 18 first. Uh, that's important to know um, because we need 2,000 for Dimension Fusion. So we're actually going to book the Sangin there. So we do lose the, uh, you know, the Demok and the Sangin from our graveyard. But this is actually not that bad um, because we've got Dimension Fusion in hand. Uh, they're going to go for Call Targeting Witch. We've got the MST here to stop the uh, Call there. They're going to set one pass back to us. We draw a Morphing Jar, but this is going to be a really big turn. Uh, we also have Book to stop the Snastial in hand uh, that we know about. So, yeah, this is going to be big. We're going to go for Dimension Fusion here. We're going to bring Sankan and Spy in defense because we're very, very low on life points here. And we're going to uh, add back a Graceful Charity here. Uh, that's really the best spell in Grave at this point. We've got another book. We could have gotten back MST, I guess, to snipe some in the back row, but I think it's fine doing this. And uh, we draw some good ones. We're going to pitch a Spy and a Witch there. We're going to set Raigeki, then go for a card destruction here. I don't really care about preserving the Forceful. Um, maybe I should have. Maybe I should have just deprived them of all cards here. I think that might have been the move. Um, but uh, we get to draw deeper into our deck, at least this way. And uh, we draw some good stuff, so not the worst thing in the world. We're going to attack in to their set. They've got Mirror Force that will banish the uh, Demok there. And we're going to go for Raigeki on their cards. They will get a search here, unfortunately, with the saying in. But they're going to search out a Sinister Serpent. So that's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, and we're going to set a uh, Premat and a Trunade. And then we're going to Tribute Set over the Sangan just to get a search going here. So that way we can sort of uh, be a turn ahead on tempo. So we search out Morphing Jar here. They're going to go for Forceful Send Back the Morphing Jar. That's quite unfortunate. Um, but, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. They've got Painful. That's going to be pretty bad for us here. Uh, they're going to send a fair amount of cards here. Um, they're going to send Change, Ring, TT, Scientist, and let's see what else. They're going to send another TT. Now, of these, I mean, Ring immediately kills us. Uh, I don't want to give them Change of Heart. They probably have something that can deal with this. I don't want to give them Scientist either because Scientist can clear the board, attack him for 300, and then we lose. So, I think it's either TT, yeah, I think it's just TT, honestly. I mean, change I could give them, but I think TT is the uh, pick, yeah. We can play around TT a little bit better, so. We give them the Torrential, they're going to go for an MST on one of our back, where they hit a pre-mat, which is dead anyways, so that's fine by us. We draw Painful, which is pretty decent, although I'm not really sure there's a good 5 to send off the Painful. We're going to flip up this Thunder Dragon, that goes through, that's fine. Uh, so now we're going to fire the Painful, see what we do. Uh, we're going to send Double Demok, Reborn, CD, and BLS. So this will enable us to, uh, you know, go for a Chaos Monster, go for a Dark Condition of Chaos, or go for a Reborn to bring back something here. And we got Trinade to bounce their back row here. They're going to give us the Chaos Emperor Dragon there. We can't actually pay a thousand here, unfortunately, but uh, I think we're still in a pretty good spot. Um, we can Trinade back their uh, TT that we know about. And then go for the Chaos Emperor Dragon here. And then just attack in for a bunch of damage. I think, honestly, in hindsight, I could have switched the Spy to attack as well. Attack Spy over the set. And attack in for 4,600. Put them on a two-turn clock. The issue is if they draw, like, a DD Warrior Lady or a Kaiku or etc., uh, then we just lose the game on the spot. So I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to be too weak into that. I also forgot that uh, they had Serpent set, which was a big misplay on my part. So, you know, you can sort of conceptualize them being at 5,000 instead of 6,400. Um, and you'll see if this actually makes a difference or not, but they're going to add back the serpent and, uh, they're going to set the serpent, uh, set two back row pass back to us and we drop pot of greed. We're going to go for pot of greed here. And, uh, now if they were at, now this isn't lethal, even if they were at a uh, 5,000 here, because we would have been able to do 4,600 potentially at max, um, because mirror force is gone. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, but yeah, we're going to go for a reload here draw two we draw mst io which are pretty decent 
top decks there. We hit over the Serpent, and uh, now we attack in for 3,000. So imagine they're at 2,000 here and see if that would change the math in the end. Um, they're going to add back the Serpent here. And they're going to summon Serpent, go for TT, uh, which was the play they were trying to set up for for a while. And they're going to pass back to us. We draw Spy. So if they were at 2,000 here, we could summon out the Spy, attack in for 1,200, uh, put them at 800. So that's something at least. Um, and we attack, we bring out the Spy and attack in anyways, because like, basically we have to press the aggressive while they don't have any cards, because if we just let them like accumulate things, then we just lose because we get 300. Um, so I figure we have to do this. But uh, maybe this was a mistake. I don't know. Uh, I think it's generally what we had to do. We go for Io on the MST. They've got the DD Warrior Lady here, and they'll attack in and win the game. So even if uh, they were um, 1,400 less, then uh, we still would have lost the game here. Um, yeah. So it, it is what it is. Uh, I think that, like, I mean, there was a potential world in which we switched the Spy to attack as well and attacked in with everything, uh, which then would have won us the game there. But uh, that was... I mean, that was not the right play of that turn, I think. So, yeah. Um, I think that this is... I think we played this okay, except for that. Um, but that misplay didn't end up mattering in the end there. So, unfortunately, we just uh, lost that one. Uh, pretty rough, but it does happen. And uh, this is a pretty good hand, though. This is actually probably the best hand we've gotten, even though we did brick on double spy a little bit. We do have a third spy in deck for that situation. Uh, we go for Forceful Sentry here, see what they're working with. They've got Kaigu Witch, Tribe Infected Virus, Change of Heart, and Mirage of Nightmare. We take the Change of Heart because we don't want them to Change of Heart or Gravekeeper's Spy. Uh, flip it up, get a Spy out of their own deck. That would be pretty bad for us. Uh, we also have MST for the Mirage, so I'm happy about that. Um, yeah, the Tribe is annoying because they can, like, uh, we can set the Spy... Uh, they attack in with Tribe, and then they, um, you know, pop our board. But uh, I think it's still worth just going for uh, this. So we set the Spy there. Uh, pass back to them. They bring out a Warrior Lady. Okay, we are fine with that. Uh, you know, we're going to bring in another Spy here. They are going to not use the effect. That is perfectly fine by us. Uh, we draw MST here. Uh, we could potentially tribute off our uh, Spy, summon that Thunder Dragon, attack in to the Warrior Lady. Um, that is an option that we have. I'm not sure if it's a good option or not, but we do need to do it. And th I mean, this is basically saving us from taking 3,100, and when we have something like Dimension Fusion in deck, we want to have enough life points to use that later. So, yeah, we just go for this. Um, I mean, Tribe is trading for, like, our other spy anyways, so, like, I think it's fine. Um, and then we have Geki for the Tribe. So they're going to go for Tribe, popping the spy, attacking in for 1,600 here. And then they're going to go for Mirage. Uh, we've got the MST for their other back row because we got the MST in hand for the Mirage. And we're just going to use the MST from hand. Now, normally you just shuffle up the deck here. In this case, it didn't really matter that much. Or shuffle up the hand here. That is not the deck. Um, but we're going to set this Spy, set this MST, pass back to them. We know the Kaiku is the last card in hand. They're going to go for MST on our, our MST there. And uh, that is, I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, they don't really have enough cards to really make that matter too much. But... Uh, they're going to attack into our spy, uh, and we don't have any grave keepers left, so that's going to be all that is. Uh, we're just going to set this dark hole as a bluff uh, because they've used up two MSTs. I don't think it's in the most likely thing that they draw another. The punish here is if they bring up Breaker here, which would be annoying. Um, but you know they've gone through no hand rips, but they've gone through two MSTs, so that's why I'm going for this. Uh, they're going to set one pass back to us. We draw pre mat, and that gives us a potential option here. We could just dark hole the board, pre mat back Thunder Dragon, get in for sixteen. That is indeed what we're going to do. We don't want them to like you know Magician of Faith back the Mirage, for instance. Uh, so and we hit a fiber jar, which I'm very happy about. We're actually going to just set this pre mat here. Uh, not go for that. I think, honestly, I could have, but I do get it. It's kind of risky in case they have another monster, and they do indeed have another monster here. They've got another Kaiku. So they're going to get in for 18, banish two from our grave, which is quite unfortunate. We draw a Book of Moon, which isn't bad. Um, so we could actually do a somewhat cheeky play here. We're going to pre-map back uh, the Spy there, and then we're going to set one, pass back to our opponent. So we got the Book, so if they want to attack in to the Spy, then we can Book the spy and uh they'll take 200 at least and we'll have a defender here for us i think that's probably the best of the options that we had here um we could have also booked the kaiku and then attacked over it with the spy uh off the pre-map but that's a bit too fragile for my liking so uh, i went for this instead and we're gonna book the spy they're gonna attack into it we've got no targets left in deck so you know that won't work uh, but they're gonna set one pass back to us we draw morphing jar which is i mean 
It's unfortunate because it draws them back into things, but we really need to draw into things as well. So we're just going to send the Morphin Jar Pass back to them. Uh, I don't think we're in a position where we cannot do this. Uh, so, And luckily we hit a Monster Reborn on the other hand, which is very nice. Um, we're going to draw five. We draw double Magician of Chaos, which is kind of rough, but we also have Reborn to get another Tribute Fodder on field. Um, so this isn't the worst thing in the world. Our opponent's going to banish two, go for a BLS here, uh, banish the Spy, set two, pass back to us, and that's kind of worrying. We draw Pot, though. That's really good. Uh, we're going to go for Pot and uh, draw two. Fun fact, uh, if they had IO set, then we could have chained Reload to the IO, which isn't as good as MST, but at least we sort of unbrick our hand a little bit, potentially. So, you know, there is some interesting uh, applications to Reload being a quick play spell. But, uh, yeah, we're just going to set this IO, set the Reborn, go for a Reload here because we are in a really tough spot. So we're going to shuffle back those four, draw four new ones. We draw some Taiyus plus Morphing Jar, which is very nice. Uh, so we're just going to go for that. We're going to set five, or set all of our back, or at least. Uh, then go for a Taiyu on the Morphing Jar. They're going to think about that, and that's going to be fine. Uh, they're going to lose a Mirror Force and a Snatch Shield. That's pretty good to see those gone. We draw Charity, which is even better here. Uh, we're going to go for Charity, draw three. Uh, and we draw Demok as well, which is pretty nice. Uh, we're going to think about exactly what to do here. Um, if we pitch the Demok, we can get back stuff off Reborn. We also have Dimension Fusion as well to get back things from our Banished Pile. Unfortunately, they've got also... They've also got things in their banish pile. So this is going to be a tricky turn. We've also got Trinade to clear away their back row. Um, so I think that we should probably have this unlock. We're going to discard a Cyber Jar and a Witch, and not the Witch. Uh, that was a misclick. Uh, we're going to send the Cyber Jar and the Demok. Um, and uh, yeah, there's also some lag, which made this play even more confusing and worse. Um, but yeah, um, so because this was a bit of a weird... Uh, like pretty convoluted and weird play. So um, it did take some uh, thinking to do, but we went for a true nade next, which I do think is correct. I think we want to go for the true nade next. Um, and they're going to go for double disappear. Disappear is a very interesting side deck card uh, that could potentially see play in chaos. Uh, if decks like this or empty jar, etc., become more popular, but disappear lets you banish one uh, card from your opponent's graveyard. So this is to sort of protect against like revival things and stuff like that. They're also going to call the haunted here uh, to bring back a witch. So that way they get, the uh, the pop off the witch, and then they get a search off that. So they're going to banish a uh, Raigeki and a Premat, which I do think is... Yeah, you want to banish the spells because, um, let's say, a Reborn Debok. And, like, I can get back Pot Agreed, sure, which is nice, but uh, other than that, it's, it's a bit rough to actually assemble a lethal line here if I want to eat through their board. Um, so, yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense here. So... Um, we go for the Trinade there. They search off the Witch. They search out a Sinister Serpent, which protects against, uh, CD a little bit. Uh, not that they really need protection against CD because they've got Kaiku here. Uh, but that does put us in a bit of a tough spot. And this line actually takes a, a while to figure out. And I actually do mess it up initially. So, uh, this is the more casual game. PJ, you know, allows me to sort of take that back. There's no interaction like hand traps or anything in this format. So, um, you know, uh, it's not like I'm I'm acting on information that I didn't know before, but uh, I go for Dimension Fusion here, um, and uh, I misordered that actually because I need to uh, I need to go for Reborn on Demok first, uh, so that way I can go for Dark Hole here, and uh, then I go for Dark Hole, banish everything. The Demok gets banished as well, so now the Dimension Fusion will get me back a spell in addition to this. So uh, I can also go for a CD here. Uh, and now I can fire the Dimension Fusion. And this should be enough to uh, attack over their board and get lethal with CD's effect as well, I believe. Um, because what we do is we attack over the DD War Lead with the Demok, uh, attack, you know, uh, the Kaiku and the Faith with two Thunder Dragons, then attack in 4,600. Uh, they drop down to 2,400. And there are definitely more than uh, eight cards on the field and hand here. Um, that we're going to go into. And we had Pot just to, you know, add a couple more cards here. So we're going to attack over the uh, DD Worley with the Demok. That'll get banished. And uh, then we're going to hit in with everything and uh, then deal the remaining bit of damage with CD's effect. So, you know, it took some doing. Uh, we messed up a little bit, but uh, we managed to figure out the combo line there. And uh, one thing that, to note, though, about this is that uh, if our opponent had 
um, banish the dark hole instead of the premature burial, then we might have been in a bit of a different spot because we really needed that dark hole to clear the kaiku. Because um, if we didn't have that, then we'd have to clear the kaiku by battle, um, which is like okay, we can clear it by battle. But then our opponent gets turn following, and uh, let's see what they've got. They do have an MST for our Imperial Order. They've got Change of Heart. They've got Scientist. They, I mean, they've got a ton of stuff here to deal with our board. They've also got Call the Haunted to bring back, like, the Black Wolf Soldier. So, yeah, if they'd banished the Dark Hole, I think we actually would have lost this game. So, I mean, it is important to note that sort of thing when you're playing um, and trying to evaluate, like, a deck or, you know, evaluate your plays. Um, we would have actually lost that game uh, if it uh, if our opponent had done something slightly differently. Now, you could also argue that, like, uh, it's kind of unintuitive to banish the Dark Hole as well as the Raigeki. Um, so maybe our opponent wouldn't have done that anyways, um, but if they had, then it's good to sort of keep in mind. But uh, our opponent's going to go for a painful choice here. Sending Confi, uh, Forceful, Witch, Graceful, MST here. A uh, bit of a tricky spot, but I think we can just give them MST. Like, that's the least threatening card in their hand. If they've got Mirage, we've got an MST for that of our own. So we can deal with that that way. Um, so I feel ultimately fine about this. They're just going to T-set pass back to us. We draw Reborn, which is pretty decent. We're just going to set the Witch uh, set 3 just to uh, play, or set 4 actually to play around the MST. We're just saying you don't have Harpies. If you got Harpies, then well, that is what it is, but we got Morphing Jar at least. So, you know. Um, also, this sort of telegraphs that we've got Morphing Jar set, and I kind of want them to use removal on that. So uh, that's part of why I do this as well. They're going to flip up a Sangan, go for TT here. We get a search off the Witch. We search out a Thunder Dragon here. They're going to search out a DD Warrior Lady. So uh, I feel good about this. They're going to bring out DD Warrior Lady, attack in for 15 here. And uh, then they're just going to pass back to us. That's perfectly fine by us. We draw a Dark Hole. We're going to pitch that Thunder Dragon, get two Thunder Dragons to hand. Um, so a bit of a greedy play we did with the Witch because we could have drawn into another Thunder Dragon, but luckily it paid off for us. Uh, we're just going to set this uh, Morphing Jar, set the Dark Hole here, pass back to our opponent. Uh, so again, this is telegraphing Morphing Jar pretty well, but uh, unfortunately they do have the removal for that. Uh, now they've got 3k damage on board, which is kind of rough. So a bit awkward here. Uh, we do have Regeki uh, to pair with the Dark Hole there, which is nice. So we're going to Dark Hole their board away. Uh, we can reborn back like the Witch and go for attacks here. Uh, they've also got two DD Warrior Ladies in Graves, so it's unlikely that they have the third uh, DD Warrior Lady there. But the issue is if they've got like a BLS, then that would be bad. So we do reborn the Witch, uh, just playing into the BLS. If they want to go BLS Banish, then we do have Regeki to deal with the BLS next turn. So uh, we can do that at least, but it would be a bit rough here. Um, so yeah, maybe a bit of a greedy play, but we're at 3,500, so if they've got BLS, then they're getting in for almost lethal damage anyways, probably. Uh, they go for MST on our first back row set, and we actually have to debate whether we want to set the Witch or not. Uh, if they're playing Nobleman of Crossout, which they might be now that they've seen more on Morphing Jars, Cyber Jars, etc., um, then this could potentially cause us to lose our Witch that way. If they've got BLS, then they can attack in uh, and deal 4,900, so that's pretty bad. Honestly, like, if they'd hit any of the other back row besides the book, we would have been okay this turn. Um, but this is a really, really rough decision. We just let that go without setting it. I figure if they've got BLS, we probably lose anyways. Uh, and they've got Scientist here, so they're not going to use Pryo. They're going to bring out a Dark Balter, and that will deal with our Witch as well. So, really rough. Uh, if they hadn't made our book, then we could have booked the Scientist because they didn't use Pryo, and then we could have been fine here. Um... Unfortunately, it did not go that way, and we do not draw another monster, so a bit rough. We don't need to Raigeki the Magical Scientist, as on its own, it can only do 300 per turn. It does drop us down below Dimension uh, Fusion range, but, like, we would be there anyways, so I don't really think it uh, makes much of a difference. They're going to set two pass back to us. We could have potentially just, you know, double MST their back row, but I don't really feel the need to do that. We're just going to go for this Raigeki here and pass back to them. They're going to go for Pot of Greed here, drawing two. And then they're going to summon out a Kaiku here, attack in for 1,800, dropping us down to 200 life points. So we're very, very, uh, in, a, in a very, very rough spot. Uh, we draw Reload, though, so Reload is something. We're going to go for that Reload, uh, send back all three cards in hand. We could have also gone for Trunade here, uh, getting back the MSTs, and then going for Reload. But I do know about, uh, or I guess they might not have another MST. So if they don't have another MST, then, like, um... The true name might have been the better play, just to have more cards in hand, but I think this is ultimately fine. We draw CD, but we don't have a Light and Dark and Grave. Also, they've got Kaiku anyways, so it wouldn't matter here. Uh, we will set a free mat and a book and pass back to our opponent. They will 
MST the book, which is the the card that we needed to keep around here again. Um, so you know, it is what it is. I mean, like if they didn't hit that, like then we could have booked the Kaiku to stay alive for one turn. But I mean, it was pretty bleak for us, no matter what happened here. I don't think we were winning. And I mean, they got Serpent anyway, so they might have even committed Serpent to field and attacked in. But, uh, or they, I mean, we, we would have lost this anyways. Like, I think that, you know, even if we survived a turn here, we don't have anything that can actually deal with their board really that well. Uh, we've got this Chaos Ember Dragon in hand, which is not going to get used unless we manage to get a Light and Dark Engrave next turn while the Kaiku set. So, uh, yeah, and they've got Disappear anyways. So, um, yeah, I don't think that, you know, we were winning this game anyways. Um, but maybe if they hadn't sniped the books, maybe we would have been in it for a little bit longer. But, uh... You know, that does happen, and uh, you know, occasionally when you play a combo deck like this, you don't draw the pieces that really gel the deck together. For instance, this game we just drew, like, MSTs, Trinades, etc., um, and we drew the pre-met too late, and, you know, we just didn't draw enough monsters as well, so, you know, this is stuff that, you know, sort of, you can sort of tinker with in deck building, but no matter what type of deck you play of this nature, uh, since it's a combo deck, you are occasionally going to wind up in situations like this. And that's something that you just have to accept when playing the deck. Uh, but again, this wasn't the only game that I played with it. So let's dive into the next game and see how I do. Okay, we got another game here against History YG01. Another freaking guest on the channel. Always a pleasure to have them on. We are going to go into the Rock, Paper, Scissors and we do lose Rock, Paper, Scissors. So our opponent is going to go first. It's just not our day for Rock, Paper, Scissors, apparently. Um... But they are going to go for painful choice here. Send Demok, Demok, Crane. So it seems like they're on a Demok sort of deck as well. Um, just a different sort of flavor of it. And they're also going to send uh, a Forceful and a Duo here. So of those, I feel like, uh, you know, we want to give them a Demok. Now, the issue with this, and the reason why we might give them Crane instead, is if they've got a Chaos Monster here. Like, if they get CD and they just shotgun the CD, bring it out, you know, blow up everything. Um then that would be unfortunate. But if they do that, then, like, you know, we're both going to be down on cards unless they've got, like, Serpent in hand. And I I'm willing to take the risk that they just go for that. Like, I don't really think that that's necessarily the best play in the world. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to let them do that. They get Confi so they can rip this Pot of Greed out of our hand, unfortunately. But they're going to bring out Crane. Uh, pass back to us. We draw Card Destruction, which is pretty good. Now, there is a bit of a debate here. I could set, like, a Morphing Jar, Spy, or Cyber Jar... Uh, I just have a monster on board uh, when going for the card destruction. The reason why I don't do that is because then my opponent will know what I have set and they can just play around it accordingly. So I don't necessarily want to give them the opportunity to do that. So I just go for the card destruction here. Um, now, the issue is with this is that if I draw Book of Taiyu, which uh, we are playing at three copies and it is a combo piece, then Book of Taiyu would be really good with any of these sets. But I figure, like, we got 34 cards in deck. It's not the most likely thing in the world that we draw Book of Taiyu off this. And I feel like my opponent can get more benefit off this than I can if they know how to play around this. So I'm just going to pitch four. Um, we hit a decent enough hand from our opponent. Unfortunately, we do indeed draw the Book of Taiyu right there. So that is rough. Um, not what we wanted to see. Uh, maybe if we said set the Cyber Jar or the Morphing Jar, things would have been a lot better for us. But we're going to go for Reload here again. Uh, we got Confi at least, so that's something. Uh, we look at their hand and we see that they've got Reborn, Chain of Heart, Harpies, and Dark Hole. We want to send the Reborn because they've got Demox and Grave. So we don't want them to Reborn the Demox. So we send that. Uh, we're going to set the Dimension Fusion, pass back to our opponent. Dimension Fusion is dead at this point. If it baits out an MST, I'm okay with that. Um, they're going to go for Harpies, or, uh, and baits out the Harpies, that is. We do know about the Harpies, so, yeah. But this is fine, because if we do want to go for a big Demok play, we can also just, like, you know, Reborn a Demok and go for that. We draw a Reborn off the top. That is about the craziest draw we could get. That is really, really good, because what we can do here, we can Reborn, uh, their Demok, add back this Reborn to hand. Now we can Reborn their other Demok. And, uh, what we add here? We could add Reborn, we could also add Pot of Greed, we could add Card Destruction even, because we do know about the Dark Holes, Change of Heart, etc. So actually, I think in hindsight, maybe Card Destruction would have been the best option, because it deprives them of having, you know, the Dark Holes, etc. to deal with our board. The reason I don't do that is because I figure, uh, if I can draw into more stuff, I could potentially OTK them this turn. If I don't, and they clear the board somehow, like or not somehow, but with like the dark hole or they change of heart, one of our demox attacking the other. 
Um, then I figure that's also fine. We still have a turn to do stuff after this. So uh, I'd go for pot. I think that in hindsight, card destruction probably was the better option here though. Um, but you know, hindsight is 2020 and, uh, I, I think that this is also a fine play. You know, they have to clear the board using Dark Lord Change of Heart. They probably don't have much follow-up. Um, and we got, like, Taiyus in case we draw any of our flip monsters. We also can thin the deck here with Thunder Dragon. Uh, so it's not the worst thing in the world. Now, I do debate potentially this, you know, tribute setting over one of our Demox. Um, just in case, like, I want to force them to keep the Change of Heart instead of the Dark Hole. I don't really see a reason why I'd do that necessarily. Uh, I figure, like, Dark Hole is a more high-value card. Uh, maybe changes actually now because if we ever have a set we're just gonna book of tie it so uh i i guess i could yeah no we we want to let them uh we want to force them to to use the dark hole i mean it won't matter here either way if they use change that's better for us because i think change part is maybe better for them than dark hole unfortunately they've got snatch deal here so that will be the end of the game uh, they need the one of Snatch Shield in addition to the change in order to make that lethal. So I didn't respect it, but maybe I should have respected it. But I think that if I had gotten back card destruction there, then I actually could have potentially won that game. So I think that was a misplay on my part. Um, and that's good to know. But honestly, you know, it's kind of funny to say this, but, um, you know, sort of the structuring of that turn, um, it is, it definitely does reflect on, on my skill playing this deck, but also... I, it kind of doesn't reflect on this deck itself in a way because I was using my opponent's resources for it. So like, you know, if we're, if you're judging like whether this deck can pull off that crazy combo uh, on its own merits, well, I need my opponent to set up their own graveyard for that. So it kind of, it kind of weird how that happened. Uh, kind of funny. Um, but just something to keep in mind when you're analyzing the deck, um, there's more to the decks than like, you know, certain results, right? Like we did get Demox on board, but it weren't, it weren't our own. So, uh, you know, that's something to keep in mind when, uh, and like sort of evaluating this. We go for Forceful here, just take a peek at what they've got. You got Pot, Kaiku, Kaiku, Merchant, DD, Warrior Lady. I mean, we want to send back the Pot. Pot is definitely the right pick there as Pot can get them into more stuff. So, and we can sort of play around the other stuff. We're going to go for Thunder Dragon here, adding two Thunder Dragons to hand. We're going to set Spy, set True Nade, pass back to our opponent there. They're going to go for a duo. Uh, that's perfectly fine by us because we've got Thunder Dragon. They hit BLS. That is unfortunate. BLS would have been really good for us here. Not the end of the world, though. We can pitch a Thunder Dragon. They're going to set one pass back to us. We draw a Demox. We can actually go for Demox here if we so choose. Get back, like, Forceful or something. Um, I, I'm i not sure how I feel about that, though, because Forceful is, like, not the most high-impact card in the world. It really depends on what they get off this Merchant, which I did have to read that it was Merchant. They're going to get back Dark Hole there. So we attack in with a Spy again. And uh, we're just going to go for the Democ play, get back Forceful, and probably spin back that Dark Hole there. Uh, we are indeed going to send back that Dark Hole, and we do know about the Kaikus and Warrior Ladies here. So, um, yeah, we're going to send back that Dark Hole, pass back to our opponent. They're going to bring out the Warrior Lady and just attack in to the Democ, uh, banish both. And, uh, I mean, that's fine by us. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a monster to capitalize on that with, but, like... Uh, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. They're going to bring out Kaiku, and they're going to attack in for 1,800 here. Uh, banish two from our grave. They're going to banish these spies. Pass back to us. We draw Dimension Fusion. That is really, really good here. We can go for Dimension Fusion, bring out our, uh, you know, Demox, our spies. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, we don't really have much to get back off this. We can get back Forceful, I guess. Um, but yeah, we're going to go for MST on the back, just in case something is just a pre-mat. We're then going to go for the Dimension Fusion here. Bring back double spy, bring back a democ, and they're going to get back a warrior lady here. Now, I think so. I think about this and I get back the dimension fusion. I'm not actually sure this is the right play. And the reason why I'm not sure it's the right play is because, like, it, I'm going to be banishing the Kaiku, I'm going to be banishing the warrior lady uh, with the magician of chaos. Uh, warrior lady will banish the democ as well. So if I go for dimension fusion again, it will just sort of like create a state where, like, you know, this is basically parity, right? I'm just paying 2000 to get to the same board state again. So I think actually I should have just gone for Forceful and, you know, maybe shuffle something back from their hand. Um, but, you know, I didn't. And, I mean, at least I get in for 1000 here. And this is sort of, like, insulating me against if they have got, like, Raigeki or something. Uh, or if they, like, drew the Dark Hole. But I think that Forceful would have been the better option here nine times out of ten. But uh, they are going to go for a Snatch Shield on our Democ here. They'll get to banish a uh, Spy here, which is kind of rough. And we draw Reborn, which is 
pretty decent, but there aren't really any good targets in Grave, unfortunately. Because BLS was not summoned, we can't actually reborn that back. So yeah, a bit rough. Uh, we're going to think about this, and we are just going to go for... Uh, I mean, this is going to be a bit of a tricky one, but we're going to go for Trunade here. Uh, and then we're just going to hit over the Warrior Lady with the Democ. That will get banished. We'll attack in directly for 12 with the Gravekeeper's Spy here. And then we're going to Tribute set the Thunder Dragon, set the uh, Tayu, and pass back to our opponent. We could have gone for Democ there, grab back the uh, Dark Magician of Chaos. Well, I don't really feel the need to do that yet. I figure we can go for that next turn. Um, and then, like, go for an OTK push. So, that's why I do that. Um... Maybe I should have just done it, but I mean, they've used duo. They need like comfy or forceful. Um, so yeah, they go for pot, which will maybe help them get into some of that sort of stuff. They're going to go for Kaiku here as well. Just hit over a thunder dragon that they know about and they go for comfy. That is unfortunate that they have that, but now they're down pretty low. They're going to take a reborn here, um, which is kind of interesting. Uh, it is sort of telegraphing that they might have IO uh, or they just don't respect uh, our Dimension Fusion, because it costs us 2,000, and they get back monsters to block our monsters with, so there's that, I guess, but uh, they're going to set two, pass back to us. We draw Raigeki, which is pretty nice. I mean, I figure Raigeki is a more valuable card here, so uh, we go for Raigeki first, because uh, I want to get this through. If they've got IO and stuff, uh, they'll have to use it here uh, if they want to keep their Kaiku around, um, and... So I feel good about this. They do let, just let the Kaiku go. So now we go for Dimension Fusion. And now they go for Ayo. So, you know, that's part of why I did this ordering. If they let the Kaiku go and they've got Ayo, then, uh, you know, at least the Kaiku's gone, right? And it costs us the same amount of life points pretty much either way. So I actually think there was a bit of a misplay on their part. They should have probably just gone for Ayo there because they're taking the same amount of damage either way, pretty much. Um, because they know that the last card in their hand is Dimension Fusion. Um, but I mean, this is fine too. It gets the Dimension Fusion out of hand, so it's something at least. They're going to pay 700 to keep the IO up. They're going to go for Chaos Sork here, and then they're going to attack in for 2300. We're in a pretty rough spot here. Uh, not much we can draw to get us out of it, and Confi will not do it. We're going to set the Confi, just pass back to them, uh, and the IO will elapse. They're going to bring out Sacred Crane um, and just attack in for 16, and that's going to be the end of the game there. So, Kind of unfortunate. Uh, maybe we've gone back forceful. Uh, things could have been a little bit differently. But uh, yeah, it was kind of rough. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think we played that fine, all things considered. Just maybe the forceful play was the big thing. Um, but, you know, again, even the forceful play might not have mattered too much. I mean, we could have sent back Snatch and then what would happen. We still would have had to use Demok to get over Warrior Lady. But they would have been really low, so... I don't know. I, I think maybe we could have turned this game around here. Um, yeah, they just... They had Dark Hole as well as coming up for a draw, so I guess they could have cleared our board away. But I think that, you know, maybe we could have turned this game around if we'd gotten back Forceful instead. But that's how these games go sometimes. Uh, and it's tough in the moment to actually decide what to do for your game plan there. But this wasn't the last game that I got with the deck. I actually got one more game as well. Uh, so let's see if I can actually bring this deck to the finish line. Uh, and show off what it can do when it's really popping off. Okay, last up, we got Dump Truck, another frequent guest on the channel. Always a pleasure to have them on. We're going to go into the Rock, Paper, Scissors, and uh, we will lose the Rock, Paper, Scissors again. You know, we're, we're 0 for 4 on that? Yeah, 0 for 4 on Rock, Paper, Scissors. Kind of rough. Maybe I should start resorting to a die. Um, they're going to combi, take the reload out of hand, so that way they have the most hand knowledge possible. I think that makes sense. Yeah, and then they're going to set two, pass back to us. We draw Premature Burial, which isn't really the best here. But we're going to set Spy, set three, pass back to our opponent. You know, again, we're bluffing Morphing Jar, trying to get them to, you know, sort of play around that as opposed to Spy. And uh, also, you know, if they've got Harpies and they've got a way to clear Spy, then we can set Morphing Jar and get more cards in hand after that. So I feel okay about this. They're going to go for Raigeki Break, targeting our Spy, uh, Pitching Serpent in standby, but then not adding it back. But, you know, I do that all the time, so I can't really blame them too much. They're going to go for Confi, though, off this Faith, and pitch our Morphing Jar as well, which is going to be quite unfortunate for us. Um, we do lose out on that good monster, and they're going to set two pass back to us. We draw a Black Lizard Soldier, which is not bad, um, but unfortunately, it's not the best for us here. Uh, they add a uh, Breaker after we Dark Hole their board away. So, because they got Breaker, we're just going to go for Premat now. We're going to target the Spy. We could have gone for Morphing Jar instead to make the Book of Moon play a little bit more juicy, maybe. But they're also low resources, and we don't want to pitch our BLS. So, I like the Spy better. 
Um, so they're going, or we're going to attack in directly for 12. They've got ring. We can book our spy. Uh, and I think that got like pretty decent value overall. And then if they don't have a way to clear the spy, then we get another spy out. So I feel good about that. They've got change of heart though. Oof. So yeah, they'll be able to take the spy, get out another spy from their deck. And summon out a third copy of spy. That's kind of funny. Uh, attack in for 3,600, not our entire life points. Um, I just mistyped there. Uh, and then they're going to uh, send back our spy to our side of the field. Now, it's not the end of the world. The spy still has 2k defense, which is not bad. We're going to set this spy here because if they got Regeki, we lose anyways. So we don't really have to play around that now. I'm going to go for Breaker. Tag into our new set here. Uh, it's another spy. So we get a third spy out of the deck. That's all copies of our spies. We got a little U of spies here. That's kind of funny. Um, and we draw a Book of Taiyu, not really the most useful thing right now, but we'll set that pass back to our opponent, uh, hoping that they break that. They do break that, and now they're just going to switch their spies of defense, set one pass back to us. We draw Dark Magician of Chaos, which we could potentially go for. We could just summon a Dark Magician of Chaos here, start attacking in. However, we don't really have many good spells here at the moment. Like, we got Book, I mean, we got, like, Dark Hole Reload, I guess, can shuffle back the BLS into hand, but I, I figure we can save the Democ for later. Um, and if they got something like Snatch Deal, then giving them Democ is really bad and just loses us the game. So I figure I'm just going to, you know, let things be as they are. So I'm going to think about this though for a long time, and I'm just going to pass back to them. Uh, they're going to go for Thunder Dragon here, pitching a Thunder Dragon to add two more from deck to hand. So now they do have a Light and Dark, oh, they already had a Light and Dark in the Graveyard, but now they got more Lights. Uh, they're going to pass back to us. We draw an MST here. We're just going to set that pass back to our opponent. They've got MST for our MST. Uh, kind of unfortunate. They're going to set another. We draw a Reborn here, which, you know, would be great if they had, if we had something good to Reborn, but we don't really, so nothing we can really do there. Um, we are just going to think about this for a bit, and, uh, you know, we're really thinking about that Dark Magician of Chaos, because we could go for Reborn here, then demock it back. Uh, but we just choose to set it here, and they're going to go for MST on the Reborn, popping that. We don't really care that much because we got Democ to bring it back. We got Pot. That's really good. We can go for Pot. And they've got Io. So maybe this is an argument for saving the MST in hand, um, as, then our, uh, as then our Pot of Greed would have gone through. So, you know, maybe that's something to consider for the future. This deck is very spell-reliant, and you need to sort of save the MST for if they've got Io for later, and they just blind snipe your back row. Uh, but yeah, so... If we had saved the MST, then we would have been able to get two draws here, then gone for Democ, drawn two more, and I mean, that would have been pretty good, but uh, unfortunately, it doesn't really work out that way, and they are going to pay the seven for the IO. Now we're going to tribute off um, for the Democ, adding back Pot of Greed here, because we do have the book to protect the Democ a bit, and also we can banish their set, uh, and it is a Sinister Serpent, so we are happy to get that banish there. They're going to decide whether they want to pay for the IO or not. They are indeed going to pay for it. Switch the breaker to defense, pass back to us. And uh, we are going to think about this a bit. And we're just going to attack in to the spy there. So we get the spy, and then we're just going to pass back to our opponent. Um, they're going to let the IO go. Go for MST on our back row. We are going to go for book on our Democ to play around Snatch Deal. Um, and they're going to go for painful choice here. They send Knock, Dark Hole, Raigeki, DD Warrior Lady, and Reborn here. Now, I figure. One of the reasons why they might have done this is if they've got, like, Snatch Shield. So, it, if they've got Snatch Shield to take our Spy, then um, knock, you know, uh, Raigeki, DD Warrior Lady, and Reborn to get back DD Warrior Lady are all game. So, I feel like I have to give them Dark Hole here. Dark Hole at least clears both of our boards, um, so that way they can't do anything, like, with their Breaker and Spy. The real punish for that is if they've got, like, CD. CD would kill us here. Uh, BLS plus another monster would kill us here as well. So there is that to consider. Um, but if they've got, like, BLS or CD, then we lose our board either way. So I feel like I'm not too worried about BLS and CD at this point, or at least I shouldn't really take them into consideration because, um, I just lose to that anyway. So, uh, I'm going to give them the Dark Hole here. And, uh... Yeah, it's kind of weird, but uh, it is what I go with. Uh, we go for Dark Hole here, clearing the board, and there's a weird sort of errata. So Dark Magician of Chaos from the Dark Revelation 2 errata onward says banish, uh, if this face-up card would leave the field, banish it instead. Uh, in the IOC printing, it just said, you know, if this card would leave the field, removed from play. So we weren't sure quite how to play this. Um, you know, this is something that, you know, if any judges are you know, sort of watching and want to comment down below about it, um, then I'd love to know what actually happens there. 
But um, yeah, it doesn't matter because they bring a Kaiku and banish that anyways. So, you know, either way, it wouldn't really change things too much. So we're going to pitch a Thunder Dragon here, add two Thunder Dragons to hand. Then we're going to go for Pot of Greed here, draw two. We draw right Geki, which means that we can bring out our Bielus here without fear. Um, but first we should go for Painful Choice, I think. So we are going to go for Painful Choice here. We're going to think about what to send because it's a really, really tough choice. Painful Choice is really, really tough in this deck. Um, if you, if you're not just going get, uh, first and just winning off it, but we're going to send Graceful, Book of Taiyu, Book of Taiyu, Card Destruction, and MST. The idea here is that if they give us like Card Destruction, Book of Taiyu, Book of Taiyu, or Graceful, we can get a ton of draws in because if they give us Book of Taiyu, we can send the Morphing Jar, bring up BLS, and then Book of Taiyu, the Morphing Jar to get a ton of draws. Um, Card Destruction can also give us more draws. Graceful Charity can also give us more draws. So all these are ways to draw deeper into our deck. Um, and unfortunately, we only had four cards like that. So we've also got this MST here. Um, and MST can at least clear their back row. So that's something. Um, so they're going to give us the MST there indeed. And so we're just going to MST their back row. It is indeed the Snatch Shield. So I'm glad I played around the Snatch Shield because um, we would have lost there uh, otherwise. So we go for the MST on the back row. We write Geki there. Uh, Kaiku there. We're going to bring out this BLS here and attack in for 3,000. Now, we could have also summoned out the Morphing Jar and attack and attacked in for 700. That's something I was considering. It shuts off Premature Burial, um, which is something, which is pretty decent. But uh, if they've got, like, uh, any Chaos Monster attacking the Morphing Jar would kill us there. So I don't want to lose to, like, BLS um, off the top if they've got it. And if they've got BLS, we might lose anyways. But, uh, yeah, it's also tricky because if they've got Tribe Infecting Virus, then they can just, you know, win anyways through that too. So I think summoning the Morphing Jar just loses to a, a few too many things for my liking. But uh, also setting the Morphing Jar could also be bad because then it could draw our opponent into things to kill us here. So we don't necessarily want to set it either, but I think I actually do have to set it because we're in a very precarious position and uh, we just need to survive in case they do have things like Tribe or if they've got a BLS uh, or etc. So they are going to banish two. They do bring out a BLS, and so I am happy I did this. They get they do get to draw five here off this morphing jar, but you know if they had uh, if we just let them keep the BLS there, then they would have banished our BLS, and then they would have banished whatever we set next turn. So it would not have mattered there. Uh, we would have been losing this either way, uh, whether they attacked over our morphing jar and got five cards or not. And unfortunately, we just lose that this turn because they do have the CED in hand and they do have enough life points to actually pay to win. Now, if we had summoned out the Morphing Jar to attack in to drop them below the CED threshold, they could have just banished, uh, summoned out BLS, attacked in the Morphing Jar and won that way. So we were kind of damned if we did, damned if we don't. Um, but I do think that that was ultimately the best we could sort of do with those sort of circumstances. Unfortunately, it did not quite work out for us there. So we're going to go in to game two, and I hope that we can actually pull off the combo here and uh, see how we do. Uh, we did manage to pull off a sort of Democ combo with this deck, you know, way back when in the first match that, or the second match that I showed um, against PJ Darkness, but hopefully we can get another one going here. So we're going to go for Painful to start. We're going to send Democ, Democ, uh, Forceful, Comfy, and then a Graceful Charity. The reason for this, we want those engraved because we're going to go for a major, major draw play this turn. So they're going to give us the Dark Magician of Chaos here. That's perfectly fine. We're going to set this Morphing Jar. We're going to set the Reload, or set the uh, Book of Taiyu, set the Reborn, and also set the Reload. Why not? We're going to flip up this Taiyu, and we'll discard five cards. And it seems like our opponent is on DD Designator. Very interesting tech card here, um, but ultimately fine. Um, they are going to get a Light and Dark Engrave, which is a bit scary, but we draw some good ones as well. So we're going to pitch this Thunder Dragon, add two more Thunder Dragons to hand here. And uh, that goes really well with the Graceful we've got in Grave. We're going to go for Reborn here, bring back a Democ. We're going to go for Reborn here, bring back a Democ. We're going to go for Reborn here, bring back a Democ. And then we're going to use that last Democ to bring back a Graceful Charity. We could have also brought back like one of the hand rips, part of why we sent them to Grave. Uh, but with the Thunder Dragons in, in hand now, I think the Graceful actually might be a little bit better. Um, yeah, you can argue about whether this is actually the right move or not, but... Uh, I feel like this is ultimately good enough. We go for Graceful, pitch the double Thunder Dragons here, uh, go for Pot of Greed here, draw two, um, and we're just going to set the Book of Moon, set the MST to drop below hand size limit, pass back to our opponent there. They are going to 
bring out a tribe infected virus that is one of the outs to our board here. Uh, they're going to use Pryo to call Spellcaster, pitching a duo. And in response, we're going to chain Book to go for our Dark Magician of Chaos to flip that down uh, to prevent our opponent from popping that one. Uh, just having it on field to flip up next turn. And uh, those Dark Magician of Chaos are indeed banished. Yeah. So they're going to set three, go into battle, attack into the Morphing Girl. They're playing around Book of Moon here in case we've got it. Uh, we don't have it here. Um, so, you know, we're just going to lose the Morphing Jar. And they're going to go for Mirage here. We're just going to go for MST there. And uh, they'll pass back to us. We draw Book of Tayu here, which is pretty good. Um, we could potentially go for another Morphing Jar play if we so wanted to. So uh, I I just checked, like, on the Erratas here. And I, I'm really not sure whether, like, this would get banished uh, if, if I destroy face down. A potential play I had here was, like, go for Dark Hole, banish the Dark Condition of Chaos, like, go for Reload, try and get, like, Dimension Fusion, and then go for something there, but I think that's really bad, so I don't think that's the right play to do um, by any means. Um, but yeah, we're just going to go for flipping up the Democ, uh, setting the Morphing Jar, and then we're going to go for the Taiyu play yet again. Uh, so we flip up the Taiyu there, uh, pitch our hand, draw five, and uh, if we draw Dim Fuse, that would be pretty good. We don't draw Dim Fuse, unfortunately, uh, but we do have Reload, so we can set this IO, because IO is crazy good, uh, and go for Reload, trying to get into what we want. Uh, we draw another Reload, so we're going to go again. Do, can we draw Dim Fuse? And we do indeed draw Dim Fuse, so that's really, really good for us. We're going to banish... Uh, I banished two lights by accident. This should be a light and a dark, but it, it doesn't matter here. Um... Yeah, it, it doesn't matter here because uh, this is indeed just going to be the end of the game no matter how you slice it. Even if we don't have, uh, you know, Double Thunder Dragon and Banish there. But yeah, we go for Demok, Demok, uh, adding back one Dim Fuse in case they've got like Mirror Force. We're also going to add back Charity and just trying to dig deep into a uh, Trunade or something like that. Uh, we draw MST, so we actually could have gone... Oh, uh, we only had one MST, so I guess we could have blind sniped one of the back rows. Uh, we could have also added... Now, nah, I mean, it's not really worth adding one MST off uh, Demok, but we're going to go for Ring on our BLS, uh, so deal 3,000, and uh, now we're going to attack in with everything else, and that will indeed be the end of the game, so I'm glad we got to see the deck pop off there, and uh, it does show that, like, you know, even though our board was sort of picked apart by the try on the following turn, we did have enough gas left to actually go for another sort of Demok combo, which is very cool to see. Hopefully we can pull off the same sort of thing game three, but let's find out. Uh, we are going to go in to game three. We will be going second here because our opponent uh, did lose that game. And uh, let's see how it goes. We're going to pitch a Thunder Dragon, add two more Thunder Dragons from deck to hand there. And uh, they're going to set one, set another pass back to us. We draw Democ uh, in the opener, so that's not bad. We're going to set a Witch, set an MST, pass back to our opponent. I think in hindsight, maybe I should have set the Sangan instead. I think Sangan is a little bit more valuable in this deck because you can search out like Morphing Jars, Cyber Jars, etc. Um, they're going to flip up a uh, DD Wardley, go for Regeki here. Now we get a search off the Witch. We're going to search out a Cyber Jar here. Uh, they're going to go for DD Designator. So, you know, the card we did see in game two, uh, coming back to bite us here. They're going to banish that Cyber Jar out of our hand, and they do indeed get to look at the hand. Um, a lot of sort of verification cards don't actually, you don't actually have to check the hand because uh, of the way that, you know, DB works and like the way it's being ruled in a lot of online tournaments. But DD Designator specifically says, look at your opponent's hand. Uh, so you do indeed have to show your opponent uh, your hand with DD Designator. But uh, yeah, quite unfortunate, our opponent has full knowledge of what we got now. And uh, we're also down to Cyber Drop, which is rough. They're going to pitch the Thunder Dragons, fail to find. Uh, they should actually shuffle up their deck uh, when that happens, but they don't know anything about the order of their deck, so it doesn't matter here. Um, they're going to go for Mirage. We're going to MST that. And we draw Morphing Drop, which is something cool. We're going to go for Dark Hole because, you know, they know we've got it, and we might as well just commit it uh, since they know about it. We're going to attack in with Sangan here, and then we're going to set a Book of Moon pass back to our opponent. And honestly, I'm pretty happy with the position. We draw Regeki as well, which is pretty cool. We're going to attack in for another thousand off the Sangan. Main two, we're going to set the Morphing Jar, set the Regeki pass back to our opponent. I could have easily just not set the Morphing Jar here. Uh, that was also an option. That I could have done. But I figure, you know, if they bring out a monster to attack into the Morphing Jar, I can book it down. Then I can use Morphing Jar on my turn, like, proactively. And then I can tribute off both Sangan and Morphing Jar for, like, a Demok. I mean, Demok would be engraved, but, like, I could draw another Demok, potentially. Um, there, there are a couple different options here, so I figure this is ultimately fine. Unfortunately, they got Dark Hole, so they will clear the Sangan and the Demok. We will use Sangan to search as a spy, which can get our Demok online, at least. 
Uh, so that's pretty good. They're going to go for Reborn, targeting a DD Warrior Lady here. Uh, and that's pretty rough. They're going to attack in directly for 1500. And they're going to pass back to us. We draw Dimension Fusion, which isn't bad. We're going to set this Spy, pass back to our opponent. And they're going to change of heart our Spy again. No! They're going to pull up the Spy, and it looks like they have sided out of their Spies. So that's pretty good for us, um, because it means that we're taking less damage here. And our Dimension Fusion is still online. We're taking 2700, they're going to give us back our Spy, and in the end phase of this turn, uh, we're actually going to use Book of Moon, because uh, the way that Battle Position Change rules worked in this format is kind of weird. Uh, you can't manually change the Battle Position of a monster that's been changed with an effect this turn, so if we use Book on our turn, we couldn't then flip up the Spy. Uh, different from GOAT format, but... You know, once you know that rule, it's not really as bad. Uh, we actually do a major missequencing here. We go for pot before we flip up the spy. We want to flip the spy first to get a spy out of deck. So that way we don't, um, you know, draw it. But we go for pot and luckily we get rewarded. We don't draw a spy. So we can go for thunder dragon here. Add two thunder dragons to hand here. Uh, flip up this spy here. Bring out another spy. And then we can tribute off those spies for the democ. Add back the pot. Get pot to hand. Go for pot. And uh, I'm feeling pretty good about this. We draw MST and reload. We could just MST blind snipe one of their back row, but we're just going to go for reload see what we get here. Send back five, and what do we draw? We draw Premat, Spy, Charity, and Thunder Dragon. Honestly, not that bad. We're going to go for Thunder Dragon here, adding another Thunder Dragon to deck. Unfortunately, we only got one left because we only got the two there. We can go for Graceful here, drawing three. And we're going to pitch the Thunder Dragon for sure. And we're also going to pitch this Forceful Sentry if they got no cards in hand. Uh, we're going to banish a light and a dark, go for BLS here. And uh, we're not going to use Pryo. Um, I feel like we don't really need to use Pryo there. Uh, and we're going to think about exactly what to do here. So we do have, so if we Raigeki the Warrior Lady and then like either Reborn or Premap back like a Sangan or a Witch, then we do need to have Lethal on board. So the decision here is like, do we go for Premat or do we go for Reborn? Now, if we go for Premat, then. You know, if they've got MST or something, they'll probably save it. We've already normal summoned this turn. And then you just use MST in the battle phase to deprive us of lethal damage. So I don't necessarily want to go for the pre-mat route. Um, if I go for Reborn, targeting like Sangan or something, or Witch, then, you know, we have lethal damage, but if they get Mirror Force, then we're forced to use pre to bring back something like potentially a BLS, um, you know, which is much more susceptible to like MST. Now, there's also an argument to just not go for Reborn or Burial um, and just hope that they don't, you know, draw like a... Well, actually, they don't have any Darks in Grave, so uh, if they drew, like, Raigeki, that'd be really bad for us. Uh, if they drew Snatchfield, that'd be bad for us because uh, either of those would be pretty bad. They'd be able to take the BLS with Snatchfield attacking for lethal. Um, they'd be able to clear our board with Raigeki, for instance. But honestly, you know... It might just be better just to uh, attack him with what we got here uh, after I get away the Warrior Lady to get them down to, like, uh, 200 life points. But uh, we go for Reborn here instead, go for Sangan. I figure the only thing that's really losing to is Mirror Force. And if they got Mirror Force, they got Mirror Force. I do have the Premat as well to get back the BLS later. Uh, and they will need an MST for that. They've already, oh, they've used up no MST, so it's not the least likely thing that they'll get that. Um, but yeah, I just set the premat and a spy. I think also I probably should have kept the premat in hand. Uh, but I really wanted to bluff something here. So, uh, yeah, I just set it. And I figured, like, if they got MST, it's probably going to eat the MST anyways. So, yeah, I feel like this was, uh, maybe a misplay on my part, but we'll have to see how the game progresses. They're just going to pass back to us. We draw Trinity, which is pretty decent. We're going to go for premat here, trying to target the Sangan, uh, or trying to target the BLS, that is. Uh, but they're going to go for MST. So that's quite unfortunate. Um, or actually, we go for uh, Witch because we can just Trinade back the Premat later. But I could have gone for Premat beforehand, but they would have just MST'd the set that we had, so it wouldn't have mattered here anyways. Uh, we flew up the Spy, though, and we have no targets left in deck, so we'll attack in for 1,200. Uh, then we're going to go to Main 2. We're going to set the Trinade, set the card destruction, pass back to our opponent. We don't want to give them uh, more draws off Morphing Jar. Um, and I feel like we're in a pretty decent spot. They're going to set one pass back to us. We draw CD. Uh, we do have a light and dark and grave, so we can go for that indeed. And, uh, we're going to think about this and we are indeed going to, uh, do some math here. I don't think we have lethal here. Um, even if we like attack in with spy, uh, and then attack in with CD. 
Oh, if we attack him with spine attack and with CD, that might be lethal. Um, yeah, that that probably is lethal. But uh, Spy is not guaranteed to clear their set. Uh, they do play Warrior Ladies. Uh, Warrior Lady could be a very good option for a set there. So, yeah, I mean it would, and also like Spy didn't even clear Witch. So, I feel like uh, yeah, I feel like attacking with CD is probably the right answer here either way. Uh, but we just summon out this Morphin Jar as well, attack into their set. It's a saying, and they search out a DD Warrior Lady here, and we attack in for 1,900. Now, uh, main two, uh, I have a couple different options. I can just leave them with what they got in hand, or I could card destruction it away. And actually, I do decide to card destruction it away, because I figured that they had a Chaos Monster, which is why they went for DD Warrior Lady as opposed to going for Sinister Serpent. Sinister Serpent plays a bit better around Chaos Ember Dragon Envoy of the End. Um... But uh, I figured that they, you know, uh, had, a, had a Chaos Monster in hand. We're just setting up for that play later. And they figured that we wouldn't actually go for CED here because we are so low on life points. Um, but so we go for Card Strike and we hit the BLS out of hand. Pass back to them. They go for Pot of Greed here, drawing two. And they go for Graceful as well, drawing three, pitching two. I mean, it's very likely they can win the game uh, from this position. They go for Painful here, saying Snatch, Breaker, Kaiku, Tribe, and DD Warrior Lady. This to me... Reads that they've got Ring of Destruction in hand. And they're just getting a big monster out no matter what. So we kind of lose the game no matter what they add. Um, so we have to think about exactly what to do here. But yeah, we just give them Kaiku because Kaiku is the one with the least amount of attack. And I mean, uh, Warrior League could like attack it in a CD and like banish it, which would be annoying. Um, so I guess we could have given them Warrior League, but either way we lose here. So it doesn't really matter to us. They go for MSC anyways, so uh, they're going to hit in for uh, 11. Banish two. Uh, won't matter here because they set one. Pass back to us and they have a ring of destruction targeting our spy, which will indeed be the end of the game. So no matter what we had done there, we would have um, sort of lost off that painful. But uh, yeah, I mean, this was a very, very interesting showing of the deck. I think that the turn where I went for Reborn on the Sangan, if I hadn't done that, we actually could have won. If I hadn't set the pre-mat as bluff, then we could have won here. There were a couple of different things I could have done um, that, you know, would have allowed us to Especially win the game um, instead of losing it. And I think that does show that, you know, the deck is very complicated. It does take a lot of skill to pilot. I'm not necessarily at that skill level to pilot it, you know, optimally. Um, but, you know, it can be really fun when you do pilot it well and when you do pull off your combos. Um, but you also have to be prepared for bricking. You have to be prepared for games where you're just going to lose. Like, you just don't have the things to compete against a deck that's just playing basically 40 cards that are just individually good on their own. So... Uh, these are things you have to keep in mind if you want to play this deck. But I do think this was a really, really cool deck and a great deck to end my coverage of Chaos Format on. So big shout out to GMYFS for actually making the deck and, you know, putting in the work to optimize it and uh, get it running as smoothly as it does. And uh, I hope that more people try it in the future as I think it's a deck where there's a lot of room to grow for it and it's very, very unique. Uh, so I'm excited to see where it goes from here. But I hope you enjoyed this video as always. If you do enjoy this sort of content, please do subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want to play Chaos Format games for yourself or any of the other formats that I feature on your channel, then you can join the YGO from Zero Discord server. Link is in the description of this video down below. Great place to find games in these formats. We also hold monthly tournaments. Android's coming up very soon, so be sure to check that out. Uh, also, if you want to support me directly, you can subscribe to my Patreon. Uh, link in the description for that as well. So, big shout outs to my patrons, GMYFS, who actually made this deck, uh, Rincewind, Bren Donker, and Porkchop Goon. Uh, I mean, I really, really appreciate your support. It really helps me do what I do here. Uh, so big, big thank you to y'all. Um, and, you know, if you want to support me directly, well, sign up for that. But uh, let me know what you think of this deck down below in the comments. And until next time, I've been Ben from White Joe from Zero, and I'm signing off.